or can you just give me a few sentences about about Tropical Smoothies year? What did the year really look like for you guys and how you emerged from it? Sure. Wow. That's a big that's a big question, Sam, for sure. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, incredibly resilient and strong and caring and kind franchisees. That's that's number one. It is the franchise business is a partnership and they absolutely knocked it out of the park. Did we do our part? I think we did. I think we did. I think we we're good partners to our franchisees, but they executed. Um, so when you look at those results and you look at, you know, we ended the year at plus seven and a half in comp sales through a pandemic, right? We fell off the same cliff that everybody else did. Minus 36, minus 40, et cetera. Yeah. So to go through that and to be an operator standing in what, what likely could be your life savings that you've invested and have no one coming in the doors is incredibly scary. What do we do for our part? We had to make our franchisees know that we had their back, to put it lightly, right? We cut our royalties 50% uh, for two months. No payback, just listen, let's, let, let's, let's cut them uh, and make sure that you feel good that we're in the trench with you working on this. That was number one, had to come out with that very quickly. We also looked at how do we how do we turn this into an opportunity, right? The old thing, opportunity is now here or opportunity is nowhere. We chose to take a very positive, aggressive attitude of how can we take advantage of this situation? How can we better serve our guests who are just as freaked out as we are, right? Yeah. We, we live at the intersection of taste, boldness, and health, right? And so we, we were perfectly positioned to be able to provide with what this pandemic did in terms of underlying conditions and everything that we were learning as it was going on to be able to serve those guests and serve our communities. We have great products to serve them, right? We had digital channels set up so that we could do that safely. But what the other thing that we really, really had was a place in our communities. And so we decided to lean into that. So we gave away over a quarter million smoothies to healthcare workers and first responders. We did a lot of smoothie drop-offs and a lot of free catering events to the hospitals that were in our communities. One, it was the right thing to do. Two, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that isn't, that isn't good for business and it isn't good for being a member of your local community, but it felt right, it was right. And we supported our franchisees financially in doing that. So it worked all the way around. And Sam, I would say we're absolutely getting the benefit of that in 2021, right? When you go out and you do the right thing and you do it the right way, you're gonna get some business benefit to it. So I, I put all of it on our franchisees, whether it's digital, whether it's community involvement, whether it's operational changes and procedures that we put in place, they had to execute. It's real easy to come up with ideas. It's real hard to execute them. And our franchisees did that better than uh, better than anyone in the industry, in my opinion. You know, thinking about, um, when you think about 2020, especially when it came to like consumer behaviors and um, just the way all the changes kind of came about, it, it, it changed the nature of the restaurant industry in many ways, right? Because you started to get some new technologies, new, new patterns of behavior from consumers. It really just, it changed the game broadly for pretty much the entire industry. And so I'm wondering now for Tropical Smoothie, you know, you're talking about this excitement in 2021. What were some maybe changes that the pandemic brought about largely to just food service that are helping you guys? What are some of the ways in which you guys are able to kind of rise above all of the changes that came down the pike in 2020 and, and use that to your advantage? If I'm really honest with you, Sam, I'd love to say I'm the smartest guy in the world, but there's, other, there's you know, quite honestly, there, from a technology perspective, from the box, the, the restaurant box, there, there's other brands that are ahead of us. Um, but we're, we're a darn good chaser. Uh, I always call it the snowplow. And these are brands that I have a, just a ton of respect for. When I talk about the wing stops and the dominoes and Panera, when you talk technology, it's technology. You know, it's like, it's the economy, stupid. It's technology, stupid, right? It's, it's yeah. the app. It's the website. It, it all, I, I hate to say it, it's all back to convenience, which I, which I mentioned earlier. What did we take advantage of? I would say we took full advantage of, of what was out there and that we were working on. And as you say, the things that we were speeding up, we were maybe 50% of the way there and could get all the way to bright um, during the pandemic versus, you know, sort of towards the end of the pandemic. I think we're going to see far, you know, far reaching effects, obviously. We've never been in an environment where, where there's been so much stimulus. And now, as you know, we're, we're in an environment where we've, we haven't seen this type of labor shortage in a long, in a long, long time. What is it going to create? It's going to create more opportunities for technology to make restaurants more efficient. What does it have to do? It has to still serve the guest. So 
I, I say this, it's a goofy term, but I call it hospitology. The one thing I know mm. is that we're in the hospitality business. We are in the restaurant business. I don't care if the smoothie is sent to you via drone, uh, via autonomous vehicle or via carrier pigeon, that product still needs to be great. That wrap, that smoothie, that flatbread, et cetera, still needs to be great. It also needs to be combined with convenience. It's gotta be very easy. So we, what we're focused on at Tropical Smoothie is with all the different sales channels that there are. Now I want curbside, I want app, I want web, I want delivery, blah, blah, blah. They're just different sales channels putting our great products through. What does hospitality look like in each one of those channels, because each one of those customers using a different sales channel has different expectations. And so I've got a fantastic operations and communications and training team that are working on nailing that. What do we have to get right on a curbside order? What do we have to get right on a drive through order? What do we have to get right on? I'd like to walk in and actually sit down with Sam and sit at a table and have lunch. All of yep. those things, it's, it's the spread of what we offer and being able to do all those things well. Um, I think is the biggest challenge. At the end of the day, from a labor perspective and technology, I, I hate to say it, but technology is going gonna, is gonna to take jobs in the restaurant business. It, it absolutely is. And those brands that can adapt and overcome to that while still having the ability to provide human to human contact and hospitality, those are the brands that are going to win. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I, I have no doubt that that is going to happen. And, and Charles, I got to tell you, if anybody's going to figure out how to make a carrier pigeon get a smoothie into the hands <laughs> of a consumer, I think it's going to be you. <laughs> uh, but maybe maybe we won't regress to that kind of technology just yet. Yeah. Uh, so that is a great segue into my last question for you, Charles, which is uh, clearly you have steered this company correctly through the pandemic. There's no playbook, right? Everybody was uh, was improvising going through this because we've never had to go through this before. You did an incredible job getting Tropical Smoothie through this, working with your franchisees so that they could get their teams through this. I'm just curious for you, how do you feel like you've changed as a leader because of everything that we have gone through in the last year and a half? Gosh, um, as a leader, I would say, I, I, you remember my background is development. So I talk too much to begin with. I've focused <laughs> on trying to remember that I have two ears and one mouth, right? It's, it's the listening, the active listening and the understanding and quite honestly, emotional intelligence, really understanding where somebody is coming through. I've got, I've got a hundred corporate employees that have just like you've been, have been in their house working under a lot of pressure with, with maybe kids at home or other things going on. Same thing for our franchisees, right? Yeah. Um, understanding and putting yourself, again, there's nothing new here, Sam, but, it, but it's put, walking a mile in someone else's shoes to try to understand that. And I would say trying to be proactive uh, about expressing your understanding of what, what's going on on the other side. So being, being super aware of where people are and trying to meet them where they are to get the best outlook. Because one thing that we did well was have a very aggressive and positive attitude. And there were a lot of hard franchisor franchisee conversations that came out of that. But hopefully we gained additional trust because the foundation of, of our culture at Tropical Smoothie is trust, right? We are in business together. Um, and so that's, that's what I've focused on is the individual relationships. Uh, and it's just reminded me that that is, always has been, and will remain the number one thing to focus on. 